Now that we are fully aware of what the tabs mean and that you are supposed to complete your coursework via the home tab, let's talk about the specifics of module one. So for me, it's really important that the class is clear and easy to follow. I take classes myself. I like to learn. That's why I became a teacher. And nothing is more frustrating to me than spending more time trying to figure out what I should be doing and not as much time actually doing the coursework. So I've actually dropped classes because I've spent an hour trying to figure out where I'm supposed to get content from, contents in two or three or four different places, and it's just really frustrating. And so I try to make my classes as easy and straightforward as possible. So with that being said, we're going to work through the course modules, modules 1 through 13. You can only see five right now. Um, basically, chronologically from the top to the bottom of your screen. So if I expand module 1, there is a reason that the course content is published in this order. And so if you click on the first item, Getting Started in Art 1200 InDesign Software, you will see that it basically explains what these videos are talking about. So it talks about what the class is and what to expect. It talks about the home, the announcements, and the syllabus tab. It talks about the grades tab and the chat tab. And then it says there's this new My Success tab. And as of the fall 2017 semester, I'm not using that in any of my classes, but eventually we will be using that tab. Down at the bottom, it explains what the learning objectives are for this module. And they have nothing to do with InDesign, right? They're just um, becoming uh, acclimated to the class. You will successfully log into the class, you will feel comfortable with the navigation structure of the class, etc. What I really like about the modules is that you can just stay in the module and hit the next button, or you could go back to the home tab and you can click the next item. So you can't click the text that says read the syllabus, but I'm going to trust that you've done that. And you can click the next activity that says course materials, text, and software. I'm a big fan of opening them in a new tab just so I can always come back to this kind of home base. And that's why in some of my classes I do a visual home page, and so anything that you click will automatically open in a new tab. Um, I'm going to right click and open this in a new tab. And then you can read through the report, uh, required course materials, text, and software. So for InDesign, we will use InDesign and Photoshop, and you will have the option to use Illustrator and Bridge in this class. Um, you do not need to have them, you will not be able, to, you will not. Um, you will not be unable to complete something because you don't have them, but we will talk about how you integrate Illustrator into um, InDesign. So InDesign is a compiler, and you go to outside sources and make artwork, and then you compile them into one central location to make a pamphlet or a flyer or something like that. And so you need to create your assets somewhere. And so we're going to use Photoshop for a couple projects, and you could use Illustrator if you want to. The software costs $20 a month if you purchase it um, at the student rate. If you're a working professional taking this class, um, I believe that you can still purchase the student rate, but you can't use it to make money. So if you have to purchase the commercial license, I think it is $49.99 a month. The benefit, though, is that you get access to all the Adobe programs for that price. And uh, if there's an update a week after you purchase it, you get the update as well. However, I don't think that you should have to pay a lot of money to take a class, and in order to get the $19.99 a month price, you have to sign up for a year, and so you do a, basically 20 bucks times a year, and it's a pretty significant cost. And so if you don't have the money to do that, you can always come to campus and work in our labs. Um, every visual art and design computer lab has access to the software, and so if you are taking another class, you could work on your coursework um, in those labs if you have some lab time or whatever. We have a computer lab that's dedicated just for visual art and design students, and if you're taking this class, whether you're a business major or a marketing major um, or a general studies major, you are considered a visual art and design student, so you can take uh, use of the computer lab. It is in room 1-180 at the South City campus. It's on the north wing close to the daycare or the McDonald's side of campus, if you're familiar with that. Um, it has Macs and PCs, so all my demos will be on Macs, but if you're a more PC person, by all means, you can use PC. And then in addition to that, there's something called SLCC All Access, and you can use that from any SLCC campus or computer. So you could be at Jordan campus taking a class, and you could log on to the computers there, and you could use InDesign from there. There is a recommended textbook for this class. Um, it's somewhat out of date. They haven't published a new one since 2014. And in general, I would say, well, you shouldn't buy um, a technology textbook that's that old. But all of the stuff that we do in InDesign has not changed since 2014. Um, all the changes to InDesign are digital based. And so the first level of InDesign 
uh, we talk about the idea of InDesign and how it works and how it functions, but all the projects that we make are print-based projects. If you are interested in making digital projects, you can take an advanced InDesign class. Um, Art 2200 Advanced InDesign is still print-based, but Art 2120 InDesign and Publishing is an advanced InDesign class to make digital outputs from InDesign. The book is recommended because everything you need to be successful in the class has been recorded in a lecture, and so if you're watching my lectures, um, you will need everything to be. You will have everything that you need to be successful. Um, however, there's stuff in the book that's really informative that we're not specifically requiring you to do um, that it would be good to have, so keep that in mind. That Open Computer Lab, just to reiterate, is 1 180 at the South City campus. Um, you need to stop by and check their hours because they change um, throughout the semester based on student need and demand, and so I can't tell you what those hours are because every semester they'll change. And then I just want to point out that this course is um, it's housed in the Visual Art Design Department, but it's also housed within the Graphic Communications uh, Emphasis. So we have emphasis, emphases, emphases, I'm going to go with emphases. We have emphases in web design, animation, game development, photography, illustration, graphic design, and graphic communications. And so each one of those specializations or emphasis, emphases, um, they kind of take the stewardship role of certain courses. And this course falls within the graphic communication stewardship. And the graphic communication stewardship is working really hard to promote OER, open educational resources. And there, it's a very wide spectrum. We're kind of interpreting it liberally in graphic communications because most OER resources are like textbooks. So if, if you were going to take a math class and somebody required a textbook and it cost $300, that's a lot of money. But you could also find a textbook that's been published online for free from other math faculty who have assembled that and decided that we're not going to try to make money off that. We just want students to be able to learn. Um, and that textbook would be an open educational resource textbook. Um, the way that graphic communications is interpreting that is that we are saying that we are going to make whatever we need you to see free at whatever cost that is. And like in the Photoshop class, Art 1280, you have to print. And the printing is expensive because it has to be photo quality on an inkjet photo printer. And so um, part of what we're calling OER is that we've purchased that equipment and we're using your course fees to let you come in and print for free. And so once you pay for the course, you don't have to then shell out more money to, to print the projects.